What's up everybody, welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and in this video today we are about to try and make our very own thumbnail shrinking dies for very, very cheap from quarter inch plate. So I'm gonna turn this into these and we're gonna see if it works on that. All right, so. The Northern California class coming up, it is gonna be a really fun-filled weekend. We have designed this class so that basically we're gonna do a tool build the first day. Everybody's gonna take home one of these with the profiling dies. We're gonna build a set of dies there if we've got a little bit of time so that you guys can get a feel for how to make a good die set for a machine like this, as well as the second day we're gonna play on the English wheel, power hammer, uh, and just do some hand metal shaping as well as a little bit of just kind of overall demonstrations. Like we're gonna do um, a little bit of metal bumping, like we're talking about uh, uh, hammer and dolly work. We're gonna do a little bit of heat shrinking and just whatever you guys want to know, um, I'll try and accommodate as much as I can. But basically day one, tool build, day two, basic metal shaping class in Northern California. Everything is in the description. If you wanna get your tickets, they are 1500 bucks. I think that's a great deal, including the tool that you get to bring home all built, ready to go, so you guys can do this too. Thanks a lot, everybody. In the description, we'll see you there. That machine right there is one that we came up with a few videos ago, and I'm really excited about it because that machine right there has the potential to do a lot of different processes in metal shaping. And I think it's one of the most compact machines that has a lot of capability. I've only shown so far how it does beads in curves and straights and how you can do profiles with it. If we can get that machine to do thumbnail shrinking as a power hammer, I mean, the only limitation is its size. You know, like if you can, if you can shrink this far into a panel, like that's actually quite far. You could make a motorcycle gas tank potentially on something with that short of a deep throat. Let's, let's talk about thumbnail shrinking dies. If you're not aware of thumbnail shrinking dies, what they are is basically doing a tuck. Now you've seen me with that mother tucker hammer, how I smoke it into that bowl and it pops up a tuck. Now that wrinkle in the metal that you pop up, that is the material that gets pushed together to shrink. So you gotta think about sheet metal like it's clay. It does actually get pushed together. And now if you were to you know, put clay out on you know, a, a thin sheet and you pushed it together, it would physically get thicker. The exact same thing is happening with sheet metal. What this does is that as these dies are being forced together, you're looking at where the sheet metal would go in. So as this is hammering the sheet metal, you can picture the sheet metal going into that and coming into a big wrinkle. And as that sheet metal gets pulled out, now this die is forcing the sheet metal back flat while that wrinkle still exists in the material. So it's creating this point that the material actually gets pushed thicker because there's all this material collected up here and that's hammering it flat. It's literally pushing the material together to make it thicker. So thumbnail dies are extremely valuable for somebody with a power hammer because now you're not using your arms to put in huge tucks into sheet metal and it's it's just, um, it's really, really difficult. So <laughs> if you're gonna do a lot of it, a power hammer with thumbnail dies is absolutely the way to go. So if we can make this machine do thumbnail dies, you can only imagine how great it'll be. We are gonna make it do profiles, thumbnails, linear stretching and planishing all with the same machine. But first off this video, we're gonna try and make a thumbnail die welder's kit. How does this go together? We've got a few different pieces here. We've got this little bit longer L shape. That is for the thumbnail on the lower die. This one here is for the upper die and it's a little bit shorter than the thumbnail. So we're gonna separate these pieces out. These two pieces, those are the same. Now we've got two different size circles and then we've got these four pieces that are both the same. So these two different size circles, the way that we are designing them to work is so that they stack like this. This creates the area that is gonna be this part of the thumbnail. Underneath that will be this piece. And then this shorter piece tabs in here. And basically all these little steps that we've left are areas to weld. And by the time it's all welded and ground, it should look like this. Now the bottom, 
this piece is going to slip into our tool holder of the planishing, or sorry, of the hammer jammer machine. And then these pieces are going to weld on either side to give it full support. And we will have two 3 8 bolts going in this way. You'll remove the set screws from the hammer jammer. I don't know why we keep calling it that. That might not be the name, the profile tool, whatever. You pull the set screws out of the lower tool holder and then you'll bolt this onto the outside. And it should be a very stout little die. Now let's have a look at the way the lower one is gonna go together. All right, so there is our lower shrinking die. Let me put it into perspective. Die sets like these, they cost some money because they're really, really good. Like these are nice, beautiful dies, but it doesn't mean that you need to spend crazy money on this stuff. The first dies that Christian Sosa made for himself literally were like a one inch bolt and the hex top, and he just welded a piece of round bar as the thumbnail. Okay, those are his first dies. Um, these are actually his dies also. These are the ones that come with his machine, the Shape-O-Matic. Um, it was my first power hammer. I took his class way back in the day. I think it was like 2018. Maybe that's not way back in the day, six years ago. Uh, I took his class and it changed my life with metal shaping because I learned not only how metal shaping works, like what I was talking to you guys before about uh, thumbnail shrinking and that type of thing, but I also learned that you do not need to spend insane amounts of money to get into this trade. And, uh, and that's what I'm trying to do. That's kind of like one of my motivations with sort of everything because I've always not had excess amounts of money to buy the big expensive tools. That's why I got the Shape-O-Matic as my first tool. It was a builder's kit. You can kind of see how some of my inspiration and mentorship came from Christian. So his first die set, by me telling you that it's you know, a bolt with some round bar, I'm also telling you that it's not special hardened steel. And why that's important is because one of my misconceptions, and I think it's a popular misconception, is that you need hardened steel dies for everything. And yes, they are nice, and yes, they are the highest quality, like the planishing hammer that we produce. Um, those dies are hardened to 60 Rockwell. They're, they're you know, they're meant to last a lifetime, but that doesn't mean that you can't have something that works well for a hobby without being, you know, a million dollars. You can use all kinds of stuff as dollies. Like, it doesn't have to be all that crazy special stuff that you might be um, convincing yourself is the reason why you can't get started. So I'm here to tell you that you can get started for inexpensive amounts of money, and that's part of the motivation behind this tool. So let's crack into welding these together because it's relatively thick material if you're trying to do this at home and you have a 110 volt welder um, i think that's okay you'll probably still be totally fine but it would help if you just preheated the material a little bit if you're finding that you're not getting enough penetration a lot of 10 volt welders they say they can weld up to quarter inch and yes they can and i think that they won't have a problem with this but to truly get as much dig as you want um, i find it's easy to uh just add a little bit of heat first, preheat the material and, and weld it up. Like I said, this is totally experimental. I have not done this before. I have not made dies like this before. I just know that it's absolutely possible. And that machine, if it takes these dies well and, and really works, I think it's, uh, it's a breakthrough in um, you know, inexpensive metal shaping equipment.
got one of them welded up. This thing is hot. This thing is hot for a good reason. Lots of welding. Worked out pretty good actually. So there's definitely gonna be a little bit of kind of touch ups and stuff. And if you're welding this with a MIG welder, you'll probably have a little bit more cleanup than I will. But with a TIG welder, you can kind of put it right where you need it to be. So um, for the most part, I mean, that kind of looks like a thumbnail die to me, you know? <laughs> there you go. And you could harden this. Like I'm not an expert on hardening, so you could maybe do a little bit of YouTube exploring on that, but you could dunk this in some water or oil at a certain temperature and it would get harder for our purposes. This is gonna be fine, like this is gonna work. With this done, the next step is putting these on, but these pieces, because they're gonna bolt onto our tool holder, I would like to put all these pieces together and make sure that this flat plane is lined up to this flat plane when it comes time for the dies to meet in the machine. So I don't want to actually put these on until the dies are both in the machine. And if you're wondering, I'm just 200 amps DC on my TIG welder. No pulse, no nothing, just DC 200 amps. I'm pulsing with my foot a little bit just to control because there is a lot of heat in some areas and because the whole thing starts to get hotter, you wanna roll off on the pedal a little bit with this type of welding. My uh, cubic feet per minute, some guys ask for gas flow, so between 25 and 40 when I use a gas lens. What a gas lens is, is this big boy here. Um, you see the lens in there that diffuses the gas. I did, I did mess up my tungsten, but it didn't really affect me too much. That is a number 12 tip, and I use about 40 PSI when I use this one. If I use a smaller lens, I'd probably use about 25 and it's fine, but I like these because you can stick out a little bit further. Anyway, I'm gonna keep going. Um, I probably will have to build up on here and I'll probably have to uh, weld a little bit more here. That will be the finesse in working the dies. We might even be continuing to work these dies after they're already mounted in the machine just to make them perfect. Because if you do have success in making sure that the flat spots come directly flat when they come together in the machine, um, that is what's going to beautifully finish those tucks into uh, flat metal again. And then after this process, it's not gonna be perfect. Like thumbnail shrinking does not leave a perfect finish. You would want to put it in the English wheel after to smooth it out or use a planishing hammer. These things are looking like actual dies. I really like the uh, the square to round. Gives us lots of weld area. Oh, who's this? Who's this? Who's at the door here? What's up, Big Dan? How's it going, buddy? Pretty good, you? Pretty good. For everybody that doesn't know, this is Big Dan. Getter Dan is his nickname because he gets it done. That's his truck in the corner we've been kind of tinkering away on. You gonna get, get some done today? Gotcha. Right on, right on. Dan's just getting his motor pulled up. The, uh, this front cross member is a little bit interfering with the motor. So what he's gonna do is notch underneath here. So uh, we're just gonna help him pull the motor right now. Your door, your door's okay. Yeah, you're good. Okay, I feel like we're pretty much out there. Some more. 
little more. Good there? No. One more? Sure, it's good. Nice. Do you want to throw a uh, block underneath the front here, just I don't think to? Uh, going put the tranny on the back. Oh yeah, I, I can let let that fully down. Uh, no, I can't. We have we have to do everything perpendicular to the lines of the shop, okay? Has to be. It has to be. <laughs> yeah, you got something under there. Okay, going down. Perfect. We go. Anyway, um, next up for these is going to be welding up these little spots here and then shaping them to fit together. But you can already see that these are gonna match up beautifully. You do kind of want soft edges on the corners here, and then you want a little bit of room in this area because that's where the shrinking happens, right, right, right in this spot here. It doesn't have to be like a perfect match fit. What we're looking to do is create a wrinkle and then push the wrinkle together. They don't have to be as precise as one might think. There is a little bit of wiggle room, but uh, the better they are and the flatter they fit here, the better the piece comes out. Mostly gonna be using the, uh, um, the Rolock. I like to use 3M Cubitron discs. I'm not sponsored, although I would love it if they would sponsor me because I do really like these. Um, they are very sharp and they cut pretty good. So eventually I would like these to be polished because die transfer is real. I ended up going over a few spots here just to fill it up because I'm trying to make these dies extra nice. I don't think that these edges matter too much. Like you don't have to get fancy. These edges are, it's nice to have them smooth and whatever, but um, the thumbnail and it's, you know, female um, die and, and the flat spots are the most important. So I'm just trying to make them nice. I'm gonna go ahead and rough it out with the 36 grit on the roll lock some more, and then I'll go 80 grit and then I'll step it all the way up to polishing with the DA, and then we're gonna try them out in the actual machine, make sure they work.
coffee. Pretty happy with the way these dies are coming out. The way that we shaped these stacks of plate really makes it so that a lot of weld can happen right in those little corner joints that we created by the stack. Everything that we ground, that's all just like barely grinding the weld, you know? If you are doing it with TIG, you can kind of just exactly put the material where it needs to be. This next step is gonna be where it, I mean, these dies could work right now, but it's gonna really beat the material up. So um, we're probably going to have to try them out and maybe refine them a little bit. I've made a couple sets of these dies before, so I do know kind of where it needs to have some clearance. Um, as of right now, these, when they sit flat and square to each other, kind of about like that, um, there isn't much room. Like they are very, you know, nicely fitting inside here. So we are gonna have to actually open that up a little bit. It needs to have a little bit of room for that wrinkle to kind of become flat. So there needs to be somewhat of a void right in this spot, right here. If you can imagine the wrinkle coming in and going from, like I guess the transition from the large tuck wrinkle to flat, it needs a little bit of room in there to uh, allow that to happen. I did try to leave these flat areas flat. Like you don't wanna go grinding these. I tried to avoid them right until the end. You saw I kind of pointed at the mill scale on, uh, on this die and I just barely kind of removed that. Well, the mill scale on this material, when you guys get this kit, I'm gonna make this a kit if this works. They probably won't have mill scale on the plate because we'll have used the tumbler for it. You know, when you grind through the dark layer on steel, that's mill scale. You wanna kind of remove that without digging in too much because you know, if, if this flat area becomes kind of wobbly, that is how your metal's gonna look. If you were to go spend a bunch of money on shrinking dies, those areas would be nice and flat. So that's what we're trying to achieve as well. But all in all, I'm super happy the way they're turning out. I'm really excited to give them a try and see if they actually work with that little planishing hammer. Once I am clearanced and kind of ready, I will jump to the DA and start stepping up the grits. And then uh, I might even give a little bit of a polish, just a little bit before we give it a shot. So something that's going on here right now is that uh, I, I thought I was kind of good to go, but there still isn't enough clearance. If I try and line these dies flat, I can't, I can't push this one back to line up fully. It's actually interfering on here. So I either have to grind this down or I have to clearance this a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and clearance this a little bit more with my knurled bit. This is just one of those carbide bits on a uh, quarter inch angle, or sorry, a quarter inch die grinder. So uh, I'm just gonna hog this out a little bit more. But one thing that um, I'm doing is I'm kinda creating a soft edge here. I find that this edge likes to be kind of soft because um, it allows the metal to come in and out a little bit easier because it's not a sharp spot. So that's another spot that I leave a little bit of room on the top die. So right now we're just gonna carve this out a little bit more and make sure that this edge is rounded nice and then we'll go to the DA and get ready for polish. This is only 600 grit, but being mild steel, polishes up pretty fast. That has a couple of marks still in it, but 100% good enough as we say. 
How's that? Like I say, not perfect, but pretty cool that that used to be just a bunch of plates. If you do all the polishing yourself, like if you're going to a chrome shop, they're gonna have to do this before they chrome. That's where you spend all your money. So if you prep your stuff and, and polish it, um, you're really gonna save a lot of money. Well, the dyes, they came up pretty good. Like I said, couple little spots, no big deal for me. Man, I always, I'm always blown away with how nice of a polish steel comes up with. Um, the next step is going to be getting them into the machine. So, um, like I was saying before, once these come out, I'm actually gonna pull all these set screws out. This die is gonna go in the bottom. The other one's gonna go in the top. And then we're gonna put those tabs these tabs here are actually gonna go on the outside and we're gonna bolt into these threads. That's why there's actually holes in the center one is to allow the bolt to, uh, to kinda stick through a little bit. So I've gotta make some short bolts. Um, I don't have any, I don't think, so I've gotta probably make some, like cut down some bolts for this. Uh, four, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bolts, man, that's gonna be a pain. One thing I'm gonna do is probably put a little spacer, maybe a piece of cardboard or something in between these. I just don't want it to be super tight. Like I don't want it to be crazy hard to get off. So um, that's something I'm thinking about. The only thing that I'm thinking about that might have a problem with these dies and that machine, and this is my only worry, is that perhaps this thumbnail is a little bit too aggressive for the power that that has, but I'm pretty confident that it's pretty powerful. So. That's, that's the only thing. Otherwise, I'm like 85.686% sure. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this before, but this is like a little bracket that we made just for the two inch hitch tube so that it mounts on all this stuff. I really like this design. You can buy hitch tube anywhere, and then anything that's two inches by two inches fits in it. I just made like a, um, you know, like a, I think this is a 5 8 bolt with a fine thread nut. Welded that on, drilled the hole, very, very sturdy, and the beautiful thing is that garage sales, you can find hitches anywhere, and a hitch itself is perfect for like welding dollies too to make your own kind of steak dolly. Anyway, something I've been thinking about. Bring these up, pull the dies out. Bottom one goes in. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Top one goes in, boom. Everything lines up pretty good. You can kind of see how those bolt holes in there line up. There's a little bit of adjustment front to back. The dies look like they're sitting nice and flat when I push down hard on them. Okay, so next up is these pieces. So what I've got is these shortened little socket head screws here. Just gonna put these in like this. welded on there. Everything's very beefy. It's almost like a GoPro mount, three quarter inch bars holding it in. I think it should be good. We're all hooked up. Which is whether or not it's powerful enough. So I've got my piece of sheet metal here. Just a little piece of 18 gauge, made a circle. Um, if we can make that into a bowl, I'm gonna call this a success. Very excited. This is it. 
Let's do it. Doesn't seem powerful enough. It did put a bit of a peak in it, but feels like it needs a little bit more oh, Maybe we need a little less space in here. Well, this has an exhaust, so it has to be up a little bit. We'll try that, maybe that's enough exhaust. definitely working. It's a little bit slow, but it's it's definitely working. I'm going to see how far I can take it. I'm actually pretty proud of this little machine because it does shrink, it made a bowl. I told you I would consider that a success and I truly do consider it a success because this little machine can power shrink. I think those dies are a little ambitious, but this is 18 gauge steel. If this were aluminum, it would do it a lot easier. Um, if you were doing 20 gauge steel, it would be a lot easier. But the fact that it has enough power to do 18 gauge steel, I'm calling that a win. Um, we are gonna start finding maybe a little bit of weak points on here. Perhaps this needs to be full welded, like the shock of an air hammer just beating on steel is quite a lot. So uh, I do expect that maybe we'll see some cracking here and there, because I think that these flush welds, well, actually I already see a tiny crack happening. Um, those flush welds should have been probably dug out, just like certain things need to be a little bit beefier. But we are winning, we are winning because this is the world's cheapest power hammer in my opinion, as far as if you're willing to do it yourself and uh, do a builder's kit. I am going to offer um, just those same plates that I used to make this die because I believe it's like as long as you do it the same way that I did it, it's very straightforward and it does work. So those will be on japanscustoms.com as long um, along with this tool. This will definitely do planishing. It'll definitely do linear stretching. We are gonna do some of that in the future. Um, but for now, we are probably going to jump back on the Roadster for a little bit. Um, I know I wanna do another day on the ramp truck. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'd love to jump back on the cars. I know this is this stuff is really exciting to me. I love working on tools and I appreciate all of you sticking around for this. If it's not quite what you're into, we will do some more stuff on the cars. Um, like I said before, there's a lot of changes coming for 2024 for Make It Custom. We're getting a little bit of help with editing. We're getting um, to be a little bit more, uh, hopefully, better with our time so that I can get you two videos a week. That's my goal for 2024 is to start pumping out a few more videos of content and uh, that way we can kind of explore the tool thing and we can keep doing cars. We've got a lot of plans this year for doing different metal shaping classes. So we've got a Northern California one coming up, details to follow. Um, we've got one, I'm trying to work with Jordan on one in Australia while I'm at the Australian Street Rod Federation Nationals in Perth. Um, I'll be there at the end of March, 25th, 26th, I believe it is. Very excited for that, so see me there if you're in Australia and gonna go to that show. Um, but yeah, while I'm visiting Jordan, we perhaps will do a metal shaping class in Australia, so definitely throw it in the comments if you're interested in doing that. Um, I thought about doing a similar class to what I've got going in Northern California, where everybody is gonna build this tool one of the days and take it home with them. Um, and then the next day will be all kind of just metal shaping basics. We're gonna go over uh, shrinking, stretching, forming, that kind of thing. 
Um, yeah, thanks a lot, everybody. Really appreciate your support in uh, all these kind of changes going on with the channel. We've got a Patreon account going where we've got um, a little bit more happening there. Nothing's gonna change on this channel. In fact, this channel is hopefully gonna get a couple videos a week instead of just one, but there's also a bunch of extra stuff on Patreon. Um, we're kind of posting photos, little behind the scenes clips there. We've got uh, DXF files for you guys on Patreon as well. Um, there's a chat community started called Dis like a Discord server chat community where everybody can just go hang out and talk to each other about metal shaping and make it custom, maybe help each other out as well. Um, so lots of stuff coming in 2024. I appreciate every one of you because this truly is a dream job for me. And we will catch you on the next video. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye.